the S&P 500 cloud chart in the daily study looking back to the beginning of the D wave ABC the correction wave and then off to the races except for wave 4 everything by the book and zoomed in we can see the demand line was qualified on Friday and it was qualified on a reverse break the most straightforward qualifier so I kind of missed that one there was a close here on the 28th that was higher than this close on the 27th so all it needed was a close below the demand line and that's what happened and now it's qualified and the qualified demand line could lose qualified status with a close back above where it was stopped at 4788.61. So the confirmation bar for this qualified demand line would need to open lower than this close, then tick lower than this low intraday, and then close lower than the close end of the day on Tuesday. And we'll get another qualified demand projection, and this one would become negated. And I suspect it would be somewhere, maybe right around here, around this support area. And the upper Stark Band has a downwards trajectory, and the lower Stark Band has a upwards trajectory. So they're forming a pincher pattern here. And you won't see that on most Stark Band setups because they go back 15 days for a smoothing constant. And I use zero days, so this is reconfigured daily and gives us these slight variations. So for Tuesday, the lower Stark Band is right by the mid band of the Bollinger Bands, so that should be pretty good support. And the channel 3 low could catch it if it goes beneath it and the baseline is there too so still pretty good support in this area it breaks all this and keeps going down then you know there's big trouble so for Tuesday a tick lower than this low on the 13th will print the D wave up wave A and if it doesn't make it down that far, then on Wednesday, it's lower than this low on the 20th, and the A should print. And this relative retracement, this qualified up three, has been major resistance here these past few days. You can see there was a high 4788.43 and the relative retracement up 3 4780.55 so it poked its nose above it and then came back down but other than that it's been pretty good resistance for the past five trading sessions and I did not go back more than 10 years so right around to the great financial crisis and the recovery after that and this is unprecedented in the QQE to have the cross under of the fast under the slow all above the overbought section line here so everything is happening up in the nosebleed section and that's incredible and unprecedented and in this S&P 500 daily chart showing every combo and sequential that DeMarc has to offer. And I have the aggressive sequential and combo showing on the print to the upside. You can see I've got everything showing on the downside. So this has two more days before it becomes stale for being the culprit of any downside action that really didn't happen except for this huge outside reversal bar back on the 20th so that was definitely a warning shot across the bow and the risk levels will stay valid if those 213s become 
invalidated there. So they've been pretty good resistance too, along with that relative retracement up three level over in the other daily chart. So there's the levels for those risk levels and zoomed way in if there's a close above these risk levels for the aggressive and then possibly the combo here they will become qualified end of day Tuesday and that probably goes for the relative retracement up three from the other daily chart and if that happens there's more than likely going to be a confirmation bar it doesn't have that far to go to get the confirmation but one step at a time let's see if they become qualified or at least this one maybe and if all the above happens in the perfect world then there's more risk levels here for the combo and sequential so these are the real ones here just straight up combo and sequential all those other phantom and variable and aggressive etc those are all minor compared to the real combo and sequential but nonetheless risk levels such as this variable aggressive ones and on to the S&P 500 weekly chart looking back to the COVID crash era I'll zoom into this current area now so price is close to this 50% propulsion qualified and confirmed exhaustion up going back to the October 2022 low. So this is similar to all the other risk levels and the relative retracement up three in the daily chart. So if it tags this in the weekly chart and gets above the other levels in the daily chart we just looked at and becomes qualified and confirmed possibly then we're going back up to the upside and we'll continue pushing this envelope up for the Bollinger Band the Stark Bands and I have these set at the strictest levels possible so it's really pushing it up and the combo and sequential cell set of nine end count printed perfected i use aggressive here but if i had the common combo and sequential they would be a nine also so nine end count and you can see down here as i've been talking about it did not do much to raise the floor so here's the old floor the tdst and then here's the new floor so not much of a difference there but we certainly did gain the fact that that's pretty hard to do to go on that big run like this and get the nine end count and that proves that we're in a strong uptrend in the s p 500 However, the Channel 3 high is still well below price. Price has been above the Channel 3 high for a long time here. Seven weeks or so. So that is really huge. It needs a pause for the Channel 3 high to get back above price or a downdraft to get below it so that it can continue pushing the envelope up so this is a pretty important level this qualified and confirmed propulsion exhaustion up for 50 percent in the weekly chart and all the other levels so to keep an eye on the 4800 area and the relative retracement up magnet from that october 2022 low is in no danger of becoming qualified for this upcoming week and should be okay support so i moved my bar up for possibly doing some more buying to the mid 4600 area for the s p 500 and my other mistake from the previous video was thinking that this would turn into a sequential sell countdown 13 but we have to wait for this upcoming week at least it held 
the sequential cell countdown 12. So next week if there's a tick higher than this close for the 17th, and that will print to 13 and will more than likely keep that for next week. So then all these 13s will be printed here. We have the combo already. And there's an aggressive sequential. And the aggressive combo is on cell countdown 12. So that is a chance next week to print the cell countdown 13 just like the cell countdown 12 for sequential in the daily chart. So the daily and the weekly chart are very similar and price is not far away from all these disqualified cell risk levels. There's combo, phantom combo, and variable combo. So that should prove to be pretty good resistance too. And here's the sequential aggressive cell risk level along with variable aggressive sequential. Either one. So just because there are two doesn't mean extra support, but there's pretty good support here, 4671.96. So again, that's that mid 4600 zone that I'm going to be looking to adding or buying.